When Mary Barrett took over General Motors back in January of 2014, the company was, well, the largest automaker on the face of planet Earth, selling 10 million vehicles per year. It followed up these numbers the following year with around the same number, 10 million, and then 10 million again in 2016. But in 2017 became the start of a huge decline in General Motors fortunes. Their vehicle sales decreased to 9.6 million. In 2018, they declined to 8.4 million. In 2019, they declined again to 7.7 million. Then in 2020, they went down to 6.8 million. And in 2021, they decreased all the way down to 6.3 million. An enormous drop from GM's heyday only four years earlier when they sold 10 million vehicles. GM, for the first time in history, was overtaken by Toyota in the United States car market. On the 18th of January, 2021, GM's stock price sat at 55 US dollars. It climbed to a height of 63 US dollars on the 31st of May, 2021. It's now lost nearly half of that value, plummeting to 37 US dollars. Last year, General Motors vehicle sales went down by 13%. However, Mary Barra, the highest paid legacy auto CEO on planet Earth, while her compensation increased by 23%. Now, what I find strange is the irony here, considering her comments over the last few days. Friends, welcome to the channel. It's fantastic to see you. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Wonderful to have you on board. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. I hope you had a great weekend. And big shout out and thank you to our Patreon supporters. I'll put a link in the description below to our Patreon page. GM CEO Mary Barrett received a 23% compensation increase in 2021. Now, I've got to point out, in 2020, she was the world's highest paid legacy auto CEO. In 2021, Toyota overtook General Motors in the US and ended General Motors 90 years at the top of the US sales charts. This was a major upset, and I reported on this a few months ago when we found out what happened. Toyota brought down General Motors' 90-year run at the top of the US sales charts to, to an abrupt halt after a severe downturn in the last few months of 2021. According to US sales figures, Toyota sold 2.33 million vehicles in calendar year 2021, as opposed to GM's tally of 2.218 million. This represents a margin of 114,000 or 4.8%. In other words, Toyota beat GM in the US for the first time in history, they didn't just beat them by a tiny margin, they actually beat them by 5%. What did this mean? GM sales in the US were down 13% in 2021 as opposed to their sales figures in 2020. And it attributed this issue to ongoing stock shortages. Now, for example, I've reported on this channel, right after General Motors said that they were the number one vehicle company in the world for electrifying vehicles, and they, I mean, Joe Biden praised them for forcing the industry to go to electric. Well, that same quarter, GM delivered, what, 26 EVs over three months. So about nine electric vehicles per month, or just over two per week. That, my friends, is not something to celebrate. For some reason, General Motors have said, well done, Mary, well done. We're going to increase your salary by 23%, even though our sales are down by 13%. Personally, I find that a little bit strange, considering the fact, right, that Mary Barrett just said that General Motors employees, executives, their salary would be tied to the number of electric car sales General Motors makes. That's what she said explicitly within the past few days. Now, if Mary were decided what's good for the goose is good for the gander, right? If she if she thought what's good for my executives is good for me, how much would she have been paid in 2021? 
Well, it certainly wouldn't have been 29 million US dollars, making her, like I said, the highest paid CEO, legacy auto CEO on the face of planet Earth in 2021, which I find quite strange because honestly, let's face facts. Facts are GM's performance in 2021 was frankly abysmal. Now, Barra's annual salary was only slightly higher in 2021 at 2.1 million US dollars, up from 1.9 million the year prior. However, the vast majority of her pay last year came from stock awards, which totaled 14.9 million. She also received 4 million in options awards last year, 7.6 million in incentive plan compensation, and another 873,000 US dollars in other payments. In addition to that, General Motors spent another $413,000 on her personal travel, security, company vehicles, and physical and financial counseling for Barra as well. So it seems as though Mary Barra is undergoing counseling. I think this is probably a good move considering some of the bizarre things she said over the past 12 months. Counseling is, is yeah, very, very wise decision. What I find equally baffling based on GM's pretty poor performance in 2021 is this, right? GM's executives, they make a boatload of money. I had no idea what kind of money they make until I read this on gmauthority.com. Another GM Motors executive earning more money in 2021 versus 2020 for their amazing performance eh, was President Mark Roos, who earned 12.5 million US dollars, which was up from 9.96 million dollars in 2020. Chief Financial Officer Paul Jacobson earned 9.6 million, up from 5 million, nearly doubled his salary. And GM North America President Steve Carlyle earned 8.98 million or 9 million US dollars, up from only 6.3 million in 2020. How did the guy eat in 2020? I mean, how do you afford groceries on only 6.3? I mean, no wonder they had to increase his salary to $9 million. That's disgraceful. A similar raise was given to GM's Vice President of Global Product Development, Purchasing and Supply Chain, Doug Parks, who saw his compensation grow from a paltry $6.7 million to $8.8 million. Going forward, General Motors will tie much of its executive compensation to various electric vehicle sales volumes and launch targets. This will include executive bonuses, stock and option awards, pension value, employee contributions to 401k, life insurance, and more. In other words, GM executives will probably make nothing this year. I mean, I know, I'm sure they'll do very well this year. Um, I don't think they'll follow through with this plan, so I'm sure they'll do very well this year. Executive performance, says Mary Barra, will be measured based on targets for sales volumes and product launch timing as well as vehicle quality standards. But of course, um, Mary Barra's payments won't be indicative of any of those things because she's more important than anything else, of course. Now, at GM, our compensation has always been driven by the company's success. Sales go down, their payments go up, and yet Barra claims that the company's success is what has driven their payments. Hard to understand that. I'm personally not following what she's saying at all, but I'm never following what she's saying at all because honestly, it rarely makes sense. Barra actually made these comments at the company's recent Q1 2022 earnings call. And that was before we knew the drastic, enormous increases in some of these salaries. I mean, some of these executive salaries are up by nearly 50%. I can't understand why. Someone please explain to me what's going on at GM. She then reiterated, no one should doubt our commitment to lead in EVs or the passion our team has for that mission right after she let everyone know that GM increased its sales by a factor of an incredible 20 times to reach 457 deliveries over the entire first three months of 2022. Well done, General Motors. Well done, Mary Barra. Congratulations, you've earned that money. Money well spent, GM. Money well spent. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.